This is for the astronomy class at Louisa County High School. Merry Christmas. Um, as you all know, the story of the three magi is a familiar story. They saw a star in the east. And the question is, what did they see? Assuming that the gospel account was not a piece of fiction, could they have seen a supernova, a comet, a conjunction of planets? Modern day astronomy can give us some clues, but not the complete answer. Let's check it out. First of all, what about the possibility of a supernova? Well, supernovas are detected several times a year, but in galaxies that are very far away from us. In our own galaxy, supernovas occur only about once every 500 years, so you have to be pretty lucky. There are perhaps a hundred remnants of supernovas that we can see in our own galaxy, but only a few of them correspond to historical recordings. The oldest actual recorded supernova was uh, by some uh, Chinese astronomers in 185 AD. And let's take a look. This is what the supernova seen by Chinese astronomers in 185 AD looks like today. It's near the star Alpha Centauri, but you need a very good telescope to see that. In 1054 AD, uh, a very great supernova exploded, also recorded by the Chinese, and it's now the very famous Crab Nebula. Uh, 500 years or so later, in 1572, the astronomer Tycho Brahe saw a supernova, and also Queen Elizabeth I of England saw this. And this is what's left of it today. And that's a picture that's got both um, infrared as well as uh, visual uh, observations on it. It's a satellite picture. Uh, finally, uh, only about 25 years or so ago, uh, a supernova exploded in our nearest neighboring dwarf galaxy, the Large Magellanic Cloud. And you could only see this in the Southern Hemisphere, but it's been well documented, and that's what it looks like. Finally, here's a supernova remnant that has been identified as coming from a supernova of about 12,000 years ago. Now, we've got all these supernova remnants, but only a few of them with actual recorded histories to go along with it. Uh, sadly, there are no supernova remnants that currently are candidates for an explosion of around 10 BC to 10 AD at about the time of the birth of Christ. So support for the idea that Star Bethlehem might be a supernova doesn't look very strong right now. What about a comet? Here's Everybody's familiar with Halley's Comet, but more recently in 1997, uh, an even better comet was seen in the uh, Northern Hemisphere, and it was Comet Hale-Bopp. This is a picture that even I took with a 35 millimeter camera. You couldn't miss on this comet. It was very spectacular. And this is an actual unretouched picture of Comet Hale-Bopp as seen over uh, my house in Louisa, Virginia. If a comet like that appeared again, everybody would be pretty excited about it. Now, could the star of Bethlehem have been a comet? Uh, two things would speak against that. Number one, the astronomers and astrologers of the time really could tell the difference between stars and comets. And if this had been a comet, I think they would have called it a comet. Also, back in those days, comets were considered bad omens, not good omens. So maybe the star of Bethlehem wasn't a comet. What about a conjunction of planets? This is a recent conjunction taken from uh, an observatory, and that looks pretty spectacular. But there was a better one. And there were two, in fact. Looking east in 3 BC in August, and then about 10 months later, looking west in 2 BC, there were two spectacular conjunctions, and they involved Venus and Jupiter. If you were in the Middle East in August of 3 BC, and you woke up at 4 o'clock, 4.30 in the morning, you would have seen Jupiter and Saturn get really close together. Um, I think they were only like six arc minutes apart. That would have gotten your blood going. Now, suppose that interested you, and you were a Magi, and you went over to see Herod, and it was 10 months later. Maybe you knew this was coming, 
But 10 months later, you look west in the evening, Jupiter had moved completely across the sky, Venus was now an evening star instead of a morning star, and this time, the same two made a close pass that was so close together that we can not even measure the separation distance, or not hardly, a practically perfect conjunction. So that would have gotten a magi or an astronomer or an astrologer of the time pretty excited. So perhaps that was the star of Bethlehem. Uh, we really don't know. Uh, astronomy will be talking about this for many years to come, but that planetary conjunction looks pretty promising. By the way, have a Merry Christmas. And thanks to all these people for providing me the software that I needed to make this presentation. And especially for Astronomy Magazine from their January 2010 issue for giving the idea.